Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one, and this is an envelope for a card. Now, this was a request from the lovely Carol, who has been shopping with me for a very, very long time. And she said, Sam, have you ever made an envelope like the one at the top of the Poinsettia Place catalog? And it's this one here. Well, it's actually this envelope here in the background. And although I have made paper bags and thin bags before, I can't actually ever recall making one in this shape. So I had a little bit of a play and I have made one. Now, the one I'm going to make and show you is for an international C6 card. That's the size of international cards, except for North America who work in eight and a half by 11. So your cards are a different size. That's the size of your card. It's shorter by a considerable amount and it's also very slightly wider. So I will give you imperial measurements on my blog. So you'll have to click open the description bar um, and go to my blog. The, there will be a direct link to this project. But for your cards in America, because you work in a different size, I can't, it won't work. It will as you can see this one perfectly fits an international c6 card a standard size card it would be it's just not going to work on the width for your size okay so if you want to do one check out my blog so okay you need a beautiful piece of designer series paper that's nine by nine inches it's a square nine by nine inches and your pattern if you have a pattern that is the right way or the wrong way I'm going to say this is the right way hold it up turn it 90 degrees because our first set of measurements are going to be the bottom part and the front part so we need to do the bottom first so nine by nine inches 23 by 23 centimeters score it at one inch and at seven inches which in metric is two and a half and seventeen and a half okay so that's the bottom part here and the top there turn it back so it's the right way up score it at four and a quarter and eight and a half inches which in metric is eleven and twenty two okay so like i say this is imperial for people who work in international a4 but still work in imperial as opposed to metric for you guys north america you're gonna have to check out my blog and i have worked out the measurements they are there they're written down they will be on the blog i get to you aren't i i also don't want a hundred messages saying sam have you got that in eight <laughs> in eight and a half by eleven please so i'm just going to do it in advance right oh no my phone's ringing pause okay dealt with the phone call right so where had i got to i'd burnished everything so i've burnished all my parts here and so you've got a larger bit which is going to form the flap at the top and then this is going to be the bottom part so and you need opposite parts so we've got a thin strip here and we're going to work the other side at the bottom and just wedge slightly at this one here and remove the rest so just take it all away be brave with a pair of scissors or use your trimmer i'm just going to mitre that slightly and here and on the opposite one i want this big one here and i need to get rid of that one so when I've cut it all, I will show you. I will hover it so you can see. I'm going to do my best not to cut my fingers. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of this section here as well. So, scooch all that off. I've got a thin part here. That's on that side. This is the top that's going to come down and that's the bottom at the back and it's going to fold around like that okay and we're going to have a seam just on one side right so i want to round these corners so i'm going to use my detail trio punch for this okay 
and then I'm going to put some tear and tape along here and then I'm also going to put it on this bottom part here so that's going to fold over and stick down and that's the start of the pouch at the top or the envelope I should say and that's going to fold round and then here's my C6 card that's going to fit in so you're not going to be putting a heavily embellished card in there but that's fine okay so that's going to fold over so I want to do some die cutting now and I've got some very vanilla uh, cardstock and then I've got the poinsettia die these are a lot of fun to work with because okay, this, I need to clean this off <clears throat> that's my magnetic platform so I'm going to put my piece of cardstock on here and I'm going to get my outline ones Uh, there's the other one and these will all fit inside and there is a right way and they will suddenly fit into place probably easier if I do it up in the air first noisy telephone there we go so that's the right pair there let's try and get this the right way around That's the next one there. And they, like I say, they nest inside nicely. Um, there we go. So. And that's sticking to my magnetic platform. I love this one because it's one single solid piece of magnet which obviously, as you can see, I've just bent it back into shape. It's because it's floppy, it moves. And what I've got here is plate one, plate two. The magnetic platform is plate five. So I'm just going to position those up again. And then I'm going to put a clear plate on top so you don't use a bottom clear plate. And just send the whole lot through. So our old magnetic platform was solid and it had lots, or rather the Sizzix one that we used to sell, was solid and it had lots of individual magnets inside it. Whereas this one, I'll show you, because I didn't think to stop and show you that, is one, one big piece of magnet, but it's bendy pack magnet. So it's there's lots of it you don't want it that way up it's a self-healing mat although you can see where i've, <laughs> I've die cut cocktails um but yeah it's bendy so if it starts to go like that just bend it and it'll be flat as a pancake again bravo right let me zoom in because what i'm going to do is i've got my real red ink here and seriously the noisiest phone in the world and I'm going to take a small block this is an A block push it into there oh I pushed it into there turn it up and that's become like an ink pad for me and I'm going to take my wink of Stella and squeeze oh apparently quite a lot into there let's find some scrap Oh, that's now going to get really runny. And I'm going to turn it into like a watercolour. And I'm just going up the centres. A little bit more. And sort of almost flooding it. So I'm starting at the centre and working up. And 
I'm going to come back in the centre so I get the deeper red there. Although, to be fair, on that one, you're barely going to see it. Let's do it here. I love doing this technique. I love it for the wow factor. And my husband is a reasonably typical bloke. You know, he's like, yeah, that was nice, Sam. Um, you know, and I thrust a project under his nose and he's like, yeah, lovely. That's great. But he wandered over while I was doing this and he said, who's done that? And I said, I didn't. He was like, wow. I, was like, I know, right? Um, so I was very pleased with myself. And yeah it's a nice technique and i'm running out of the red so i'm just going to clean it off by doing that onto my grid paper and i want a bit more but i'm going to go the other side this time around and just a little squadge because this centered one is going to be that bit darker You could have done this on Wisp White, but my paper is very vanilla and I wanted the vanilla. Can you see that one I'm doing? You can see where I'm working, just at the base of the petals. pretty much done so to clean off your wink of Stella just keep wiping it and swiping it until it's clear and the same with that I've got a glitter all over my fingers but actually a really good way to clean those you could use wet wipes or baby wipes these are green shield household wipes because you know who can get hold of Dettol wipes these days and clean as a whistle right let me zoom back out again so on my very mucky paper i'm going to start putting these together so i just want to bend up the leaves a little bit and i'm going to use liquid glue dimensionals and dry adhesive does not like wink of stella how rude wink of stella is the best stuff ever um so a wet glue like tombow absolutely perfect for it and i'm just offsetting my petals i'm not worrying about shaping them just yet i'm just going to move that over there and finish off this and i ch oh really phone i just feel it needed a little band of something so i've got the um, early espresso ribbon nearly cut my finger then um, i'm gonna have a mini glue dot on either end just wrap so that it meets and overlaps a tiny little bit and this isn't going to be dry enough for me just yet but what the heck you want to see the finished video I'm going to hold that in place and I forgot to get my bits um, for the centre. They're here. And again, you need a little bit of liquid glue. Pop it in the centre. Hold it down. It's not, dr it's not dry enough for me to work with. It's a little bit of wet with the Wink of Stella. But that is what you end up with. And so this one was very vanilla with 
um, crumb cake to get the different look and you can actually see the detail of the embossing but you can definitely see the glitter and you can see where I've lifted up all of the edges I can't do that yet it's a little bit wet it will be dry for the photos but Carol thank you for the request and the inspiration to make this I love it I might make some more thank you ever so much for joining me hope to speak to you very soon bye <laughs>